Beloved, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and who will guess that time really is flying by so quickly? But this means it's another day, a new day, in which you and I can come and we worship the Lord. We may praise His name, we may honor Him, we can exalt His holy and beautiful name. I do hope and trust that you have enjoyed thus far a great weekend, a great week. But if you're ready, we are ready. The Word of God says, and we know it, that where two or three are gathered in His name together, there He is. We know that He's with us. He will be with us forever. I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes. We're going to pray. We're going to come and thank the Lord for His goodness. We're going to come and give Him the highest praise and honor for His kindness, His mercy, and His goodness unto us. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son who died on the cross of Calvary, who brought us liberty, Lord, today to may come to you and approach your throne of grace because of this new and living way caused by the death of Jesus on the cross. We are so grateful. Lord, from our hearts, we just want to come and say thank you. Thank you that you have brought us up to this moment, this time, Lord, where we may just become quiet within ourselves and just listen. To what your word is saying. Thank you for this opportunity. As we are about now, Lord, to praise you and to worship you, that your name will be exalted high above the earth and high above the heavens. This great God. We thank you for that. And to that you and I can answer, Amen. I want to invite you to come and worship the Lord with me. We bow down and confess you are
dear Lord. Draw us to the place where love will abound forever, where it can never cease. And that is at your side. How precious. serving a great God, one who will draw us close to him every moment of the day, one who deserves our worship, our praise, and our honor. Beloved, I would like you to turn with me today to Romans chapter 8. And of course, for those who do not know, this is my all-time chapter in the Bible because it says so much. And once one grasp and understand what the righteousness of God means and the love of God, then one just to, wants to tarry in that and you want to live that. Romans chapter 8, and I will be only reading verses 38 and 39, and the title of our message today is The Unchanging Love of God. The Unchanging Love of God. Shall we read the word of the Lord? For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other creating or created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is simply just awesome. I do not have any other words to describe this as simply being awesome. I already greeted you and it's good to have you with us Again, as we will be talking today on the unchanging love of God. I would like to start off by saying that God's love is incredible, infinite and unfailing. This love that you and I are experiencing here and what the Bible teaches us is a love that can simply never End. It's a love that can and will never cease. It's a love that will stand forever. This love that brought to you and me today liberty. This love that you and I can experience in an incredible, infinite and in an unfailing manner. I have read it and I would like just to repeat for us, if you don't mind, I want to repeat verse 39, where it says, Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. From hence then also the title, The Unchanging Love of God. God's love is a love that stands forever. God's love brings to you and me certain things which you and I can take to heart and live with that and make it 
our own on a daily basis. In spite of a life and a world where it is loveless. Everybody for him or herself and nothing more. But I'm here today to come and tell you that this incredible love, this infinite love and this unfailing love still stands forever and will stand until eternity. Would you care to turn with me to 1 Corinthians, please, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, well-known chapter in the Bible, which is used so many times, especially at the solemnizing of marriages. But I would like us to read from verses 4 to 7, and what I got from these couple of verses is that God's love is perfect, and it is a model for how to love. Verse 4 says, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Isn't this beautiful? A love that has been described as a model for how to love. You see, beloved, let me come in again today to come and say to you, nowhere and there will be no time at any time where you and I will be able to say, Lord, I didn't know how to love. I didn't know and I have never learned on how love should look like and be portrayed. I have read it to you here. So God's love is perfect and it is a model for how to love. The question is whether you and I understand it in that light and whether we want to model that type of love. You see, if the Lord, if Jesus dwells within our hearts and we have accepted him as Lord and Savior of our lives because he is love, we cannot love in any different manner. So if, it, if life or if love is this perfect model for how to love and God's love shows us that, it simply means and brings us to the next point where it says that God's love cannot fail. And would you turn with me to Psalm 36, verse 5, Psalm 36, and we're going to read from verse 5 until verse 7, taking again everything and my scripture reading from the Amplified Study Bible. So we have learned, number one, that God's love is a perfect model for how we should love. Number two, God's love, which is unchanging and can never fail. And we got this from Psalm 36, verses 5 to 7. Ha, your loving kindness and graciousness, O Lord, extend to the skies. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness. O oh God, the children of men take refuge in the shadow of 
your wings. Verse 7, how precious is your loving kindness. Shall we repeat number one? God's love is the perfect model for how to love. Number two, it's a love that cannot fail. Do you understand from where and why I have titled this message for today, The Unchanging Love of God, because it cannot fail. You see, and this again just simply brings me to the chorus that says, Never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. And Jesus has never a model how you and I should love and in the second place it cannot fail this unchanging love brings us to first John chapter 4 also a very well-known verse and the verse says in verse 8 the one who does not love has not become acquainted with God does not and never did know him for God is love he is the originator of love, and it is enduring a tribute of his nature. Isn't that great? God's love can never change. It's unchanging. He doesn't love us today, and tomorrow he doesn't. Whereas, unfortunately, and I have to say it, beloved, that so many times we question God in how he works, and how God does things in our lives, and we are not happy with that, causing us then to love him less. But his love is unchanging. The same way that God, when he started, and God is ever existing, he is, and that never changed. He is still that. Remember what I said when we started? It is an incredible love, an infinite love, and an unfailing love. And that is what you and I need to be reminded of each and every single day. We should never forget this. This one thing I know, we've just sung it, that wherever I may go, Jesus' love has never failed me yet. And it won't fail me. Do you understand? And if we have him within our hearts, because he is love, then we ought to love in that same manner. Yes, it's true that sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes we do not know how to react and act to certain things. But if you and I have that fruit, does the Bible teaches us that? Galatians 5, 22 
The fruit of the Spirit is what? It starts with love. Love, that's a fruit. And, and we, didn't, we need to grow that. Remember, it is out here in which we are talking about growing from maturity to perfection. And if we, to love perfectly, if we to love in that manner, we need to have that love, that unfailing love. We need to trust it. We need to build on that on a daily basis. You understand? So when we move on, so what, what do we have? We have God's love that it's perfect. And this is the model how to love. Number two, it's a love that cannot fail. And number three, with God's love, you have nothing to fear. And this is what we have read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Because God is love. So therefore, we do not have to fear. We do not have to fear anything. Because that love that you and I are experiencing on a daily basis, that love endures forever. And this makes me so excited. I, I cannot help but just give the Lord glory and honor because he is such a great God. It brings us to the fourth one. And here we have to understand. And, and, and if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18 to 19, we, we're going to discover here that God's love is too great to fully understand. And, and, and this is what the Bible also says. The Bible teaches us this. Shall we read verses 18 and 19? It says, Be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height, and depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing endless love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled with flooded and flooded with God himself. Isn't this great? I want to read it again. I want to read it again. And, and, and perhaps, let, let, us, let us start from verse 16. Go with me back to verse 16 of Ephesians 3. May he, that's God, may he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you have been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, that unchanging, unfailing love. Be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of his love. So number four, God's love is too great to fully understand. The, the, the width and the length and the height and the depth of it. Beloved, listen, it, it, it is... It is hard to grasp and to fully comprehend and understand this love of God. How can he love such a people who is so sinful? People who today will worship him. Tomorrow they will curse him. Today they will tell him that they love him. Tomorrow they won't love him anymore because he does not care about them. He does not come around and he does not do and come through for them in the way they want. And unfortunately, this is this species that you and I form, mankind. I'm going to go back. It's an incredible love. It is an infinite love and it is an unfailing love. Therefore, hence our title, the unchanging love of God. Just because things doesn't work out, just because things seems to be hard and difficult, doesn't say God loves us, doesn't love us. He does love us. He loves us and he cares about us to such an extent that he will and can never fail us. He promised that in his word.
The song says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. His love is steadfast. It cannot waver and will never cease. A love that you and I can depend on forever. But sorry, this is just, just the teacher in me. A question. Is it possible that our love from time to time ceases? That it stops? We love less? Just because things do not work out and, and, and things do not play out the way that we want it? You see, that's the difference between us and God. That's why we can never and will never be God. Because He loves unconditionally. We sometimes love conditionally. And, and, and I don't know whether you can remember, sometime back, it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, I spoke to you on unconditional love. Today I'm back, just to come and tell you that it is an unchanging love. And since we spoke on un, uh, um, conditional love, nothing changed in the meantime. He is still the same God. He still loves you. When no one, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. You understand? So, for me today is, is to come here and just to come and tell you. And, and I want you to understand that. Paul says it so beautifully to the church in Ephesus. May he, may God grant you out of the riches of his glory. This love that you and I will comprehend, that you and I will understand the width and the length and the depth and the height of this love. A love that sent Jesus to the cross. When he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. There's a beautiful song that says, and the chorus part says, I love you. I love you. That's what Calvary says. I love you. I love you. I love you. Written in red. This is what God is saying to you and me today. His love cannot change. We cannot undo the crucifixion of Jesus. We cannot undo the fact that he's, he bled and died on the cross. We cannot change it. We cannot just reverse it and say that he did not spill his blood on Calvary's heel. We can't. It happened, beloved, and it was for you and for me. Isn't this awesome? Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how important this unchanging love of God is towards you and me. So let us revise quickly and go back and capture quickly what I have said. I've mentioned four points so far about this incredible, infinite and unfailing love of God. Number one, God's love is a model how to love. Number two, we said that it is unfailing. His love, we have no, nothing to fear about when it comes to that love because it stands forever. And in the fourth place, it is too great to fully comprehend and understand. You see, do you know that he cannot stop loving us? If that is true, we have to wipe off the table Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary. And that, beloved, can and will never happen. That is why it's infinite. That's why it's so incredible. That's why it's so unfailing. I don't know about you, but I just love him. I love him too much to turn back now. My life has fully and 100% wholly devoted unto him. I serve the Lord. I, I give him my everything on a daily basis. 
And I make sure that everyone that I get in contact with knows that and understand that I love him so much. May I just sing the chorus? I'm not going to sing the whole song. I, I just want to sing, and this is my personal testimony, but I just want to sing the, the, the chorus part. No one ever Unchanging love that is incredible, infinite, and unfailing. I want to share with you the fifth point under this unchanging love that we are talking about today. And I want you to turn with me to Psalm 5, please. Psalm 5, and we will be reading verses 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy, because you cover and shelter them. Let those who love your name be joyful and exult in you. For you, O Lord, bless the righteous man, the one who is in right standing with you. You surround him with favor as with a shield. What possibly can be point number five? Let's recap quickly. Number one, God's love is a model, the perfect model, how to love. Number two, it is an unfailing love. Number three, it's a love that you and I have nothing to fear about. Number four, it's a love too greatly to fully understand. Number five, God's love surrounds you and keeps you and me safe. 
Isn't this great? No one ever loves me so like Jesus. But let all who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy because you cover and shelter them. In other words, he covers and he, he shelters, he surrounds us with his love. You remember that Sunday school chorus that we grew up with? The love of Jesus is so wonderful. It's so high, you can't get over it. It's so low, you can't get under it. It's so wide, you can't get around it. You have to go in by the door, which is Jesus. <laughs> oh, isn't this great? Don't you just love the word of God? Let those who love your name be joyful and exult in you. For you, O Lord, bless the righteous man, the one who is in right standing with you. You surround him with favor as with a shield. So in the fifth place, his love surrounds us and keeps us safe. A verse in the Bible that says, no one can snatch us out of, out of his hand. No one. Believe that. My beloved, why will you and I worry? Why will you and I not just abide fully in this love, accept it, this unchanging love of God, which stands forever and ever and ever and ever? Beautiful, isn't it? Would you turn with me to point number six? And, and, and we are slowly but surely coming to a, a closure but, and to an end, but I want you to to understand and, and, and realize. And we're going to move back now. Point number six to our opening verse. Romans 8. And, and we're going to add verse 35 to 37, 38 and 39. Shall we read verse 35? Who shall ever, ever separate us from the love of Christ? A question. Paul asks. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? That forms part of the question that's being asked. What? Who? And now he comes. And, and, and this is what I love. In verse 37, he says, Yet, in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. And then, of course, the verse 38 and 39, which says, for I am convinced, are you? I am. I am, beloved. And continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May I just add a couple of, of words to verse 39, please. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited incredible infinite and unfailing and unchanging love of god which is in christ jesus our lord let us at the end recap let's go back and take all six points and i will have it displayed as i'm going to give it to you now so that you have it with the verses for study purpose or easy reference. Number one, 
Let us have a look. God's love is perfect and is a model for how to love. Number two, God's love cannot fail. Number three, with God's love you have nothing to fear. Number four, God's love is too great to fully understand. Number five, God's love surrounds you and keeps you safe. And in the sixth place, nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. Do you hear me? May I? We're just gonna, at the end, this song tells a story and, and perhaps you may just feel you can join in. Beautiful hymn. And the songwriter says, I We 
will forever be grateful that you came to such as us people. All the glory, all the praise, and all the honor belongs to you. For that, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion with the Holy Spirit, beloved, be, stay, and remain with us until Jesus comes again. And to that you and I can answer, Amen. Shalom. Be blessed. And stay blessed. And just before we come to an end, I've got one more song that I want to leave with you. I want you to listen to the words. This really, really just brought something. And listen. The love of God.